All right, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday. This is uh, Nitha Ramachandra from the NR Hour Sports Show. This is episode 1045. <clears throat> we are live on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, on all the podcast platforms. And I'm joined by my good friend from Trent Thunder. He's an outfielder slash first baseman. His name is Paul Kumalos. Uh, what a great season he had for Trent Thunder. We had the opportunity to cover him and his teammates this season with Jersey Sporting News. But I'm glad to have him on our show the NR Hour and fans, please tune in on on the Speak Rap. Everybody knows that app where you can ask questions to Paul today and interact with us. And uh, Paul, uh, like I said, uh, we got to uh, interview interview you in person and got to cover you guys this season with Jersey Sporting News. But uh, I want to get I wanted to get you on on a different platform so you can discuss some of your story to our fans. But first of all, how are you and your family doing today? And thanks for joining. We're doing, we're doing good, and thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So let's start off with uh, obviously you uh, play baseball. And w when did you get interested in playing baseball? And um, obviously you went to San Diego University. But talk about uh, what got what got you into baseball and who would you say your biggest role model was? Yeah, so when I was about four years old, my parents were trying to get me into like flag football, basketball, soccer. And every time I went and tried tried out for one of the sports, I didn't like it. I refused to do it. So finally, they they uh, brought me to baseball tryouts, and I just fell in love instantly. Well, yes. And my biggest role models would be my parents for sure, both of them. Well, yeah. To talk about, uh, obviously, uh, Ryan said yesterday he played multiple sports, and um, playing multiple sports is now these days is really important for kids. So for you. Um, what is it? What's it like being versatile in in, in the sport in, in sports? So teams, when teams look at you and see, uh, wow, this uh, this is the type of player I want. So what? Do, how important is it for you and other athletes to be versatile now in these days? Oh, it's extremely important because it shows how athletic you are and how you can uh, produce and project in the long run. Because if you're athletic enough to play and in Ryan's case, be very good at football and baseball. It definitely helps. It doesn't hurt. That's for sure. Yeah. So I know what my kids, whenever I do have kids in the future, that uh, I'm going to have them play multiple sports, not just one. Yeah. So for you, before, um, obviously, <clears throat> before you decided to uh, be first base in outfield, did you get to, did you ever get to pitch um, in your career? Uh, I pitched a little bit. Mainly growing up, um, summer ball in high school, I would pitch, but never really stepped on the mound from high school until sadly that one game where we lost like 28 to three, I got the pitch. So at least I made my pro debut on the mound. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So tell our fans, um, obviously you play two positions and, uh, going into like a game or, uh, going into practice, um, how, how tough is it for you to prepare for each position and how, how long does it take you whenever the coach tell you what where, where are you going to play that day but how do you do you prepare uh as if you're going to play uh, two positions or how, how do you go about that well so with Trenton Mick would send out coach Manto would send out our lineup so I would I would know in advance where I'm playing and even the outfield is kind of different. Like I, I feel more comfortable in right field and then center field and then left field. So it's I get reads differently out there. So it's, it's huge for me. Ground balls especially. Yeah. So if I know I'm playing first base, I want to take extra ground balls usually just to get the feel for the grass, the playing, playing surface. And But if I'm playing left field and center right field, I will probably read more pop flies and – uh. BP, just because I'm not as comfortable out in left field, but it's really just a preference. I read it a little bit differently, but yeah, it's, yeah I think it's huge for me. I like to prepare, get more reads. Yeah. So uh, we have a, so we are live with uh, Trent Thunder's first baseman outfielder, Paul Kumalos. Uh, we have a, we, we already have a fan question for you that just popped in in here. One of our fans want to know um, if you, if you were, if you were not playing a sport, they want to know what would you be doing now? If I was not playing a sport, what would I be doing? That's a hard question. Um, probably doing some type of marketing. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's what I got my degree in at St. Leo's marketing. And my brother-in-law is actually the chief marketing director with the Tampa Bay Rays. So watching him do that the last 12 years kind of got me interested in it to know if I'm not playing baseball, I could still work around the game. So probably something to do with baseball and marketing for wow. sure. <clears throat> so, uh, who, who are some of the players that you looked up, look up to right now, actually, uh, who plays the same position as you, outfield and first base? Okay, so Bryce Harper's the first one that comes to mind. Yeah, for sure. But lately, I've been kind of comparing myself, a player comp, to Alex Verdugo. Oh, yeah. I see a lot of myself yep. in him. More of the good outfielder, can hit for average, and will event, like show some power here and there. So I like the way he plays, too. He plays hard. Very good hitter. Yeah, and also uh, I was thinking of uh, Kyle Schwarber a little bit. Oh, Kyle Schwarber. I get a lot of uh, – everyone says I look like him in a <laughs> uniform. So I'll take it. That's a compliment. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> what <is> – <clears throat> excuse me. So what, what was it like for you throughout your career at San, Le San Leo University? Obviously a great college there. And tell our fans about your experience there. What did you learn uh, from San Leo? St. Leo University from your coaching staff and that got you here at this point. Yeah, St. Leo, um, that was a journey for me because I got drafted out of high school by the Philadelphia Phillies in the oh, wow. 40th round. That was back when there were still 40 rounds yeah. in 2017. So then I go, I go to St. Leo and it was just a culture shock, really, going from high school to college. Uh, I wasn't that good as good as I thought I was, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I didn't, I, I redshirted my freshman year, redshirt freshman year, started playing a little bit, redshirt sophomore year is when COVID hit, and I just started to find my swing, started to feel good. So yeah, the COVID really, COVID really, it sucked for all of us, obviously, but for baseball players and college athletes, it, it was, it was tough, but I think I think honestly it made a lot of a lot of us better and more mature because you know overcoming a pandemic yeah it's hard to do so that that really set us up I think good for our future honestly to deal with that now we know that we can make it through any challenges that come throughout our life so that really helped me out that made me stronger uh, junior year wasn't playing as much in the beginning and then got my shot started hitting really good got first team all conference and then all american so that's when i really started to find myself again um but my coaches at st leo you know i mean coach odette caldwell coach kennedy all of them uh they played a big role on me because they didn't only make me a good baseball player they made me a better person they really knew how to set us up to be good people outside of baseball and in the future. So I really appreciate them for that. Hmm. Yeah, so speaking of that draft, let's go back to that draft and uh, tell our fans about your draft experience. Obviously, getting drafted by a historic franchise like the Philadelphia Phillies um, in the 40th round. And um, <clears throat> talk about that. And did you did you ever think to yourself, maybe you could have signed that deal or were you content on going to college? Um. So, yeah, I mean, that that – the experience is really cool. Uh, I had some friends and family over. It was on the radio because I don't think they were doing it uh, on television then. Oh. So I got the call in the 40th round. Well, I, I got a call in the 30th saying that it could be coming up, and then it just kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. So at that point, I knew I was going to go to college. I originally went to college in Central Florida for half a semester. It was a JUCO yeah. in Ocala, really good JUCO, good program. I went there for half a semester before St. Leo, but I knew I had a full ride there, 40th round out of high school, not good money. So I was, I was content with going to college. I mean, I definitely look back sometimes and think, you know, what if, what if, what if, but I think I wouldn't be where I am now if I took that for sure. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I know that the Phillies have like a, a good uh, minor league system there. Um, that, that helped develop players and um, but yeah uh, I mean look where you're at now you're, you're working hard and trying to get another offer in the majors hopefully that happens for you and 
Um, we have another question, uh, fan question. One of our fans want to know some of your best moments at San, uh, San Leo University. Best moments at San Leo. There's a lot. Uh, overall, off the field, I would say all the personal connections I made because I have lifelong friends that I consider my brothers from St. Leo. So that one, but then on the field would be last year, we made our first regional since 2001 and we hosted. So to be in that game, game one of a regional, first regional game in 21 years, and we're hosting it, seeing everyone that came out and supported us, that was a really cool moment, I think, for all of us there. It really made everything worth it, all the bad years, all the struggles, and made it worth it for that one moment. Wow. Yeah, so tell, tell, our, tell our fans, <clears throat> how did you get the Trent Thunder opportunity and um, how grateful are you uh, to be part of that team this season and uh, and having them believing believe in you from day one? Yeah, so um, – I so last summer I went in the Ohio Valley League, played summer ball there. I had a really good summer there. Um, and during that same summer, St. Leo sent Sam Crail, Yo Yo, and I think Bobby Sparling over to the draft league. So, and that was the first year of the draft league. I mean, so when that when they were done with that summer, St. Leo had a pretty good connection there, already sent some good, good players there who succeeded. So when Coach Odette came up to me and asked me if I wanted to be in the draft league, I didn't hesitate. I said, yes, I think I should be there. I want to be there. So, yeah, th that's how I got in the draft league. And then they obviously have the random selections, the random teams. I was just blessed to be sent to Trenton. And that I think that was the best thing for me, playing for Coach Manto and Sean Chacon, Dave. All of those guys were really good, really good to me and for me for baseball. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> did you know about the MLB draft league uh, going before going in? Or yeah, I knew about it. Yeah, and I I, I strive to get in there. I, I guess you could say I play with a chip on my shoulder because I thought I should have been there already. I thought that I should have been going with my other teammates to that league. So I played with a chip on my shoulder to make sure I got there the next year. Hmm. Uh, another fan question that just popped in. One, one, uh, they want to know what advice would you give someone who's trying to, who's working their way up, just like what you did. My advice would be to have fun. Don't make it stressful because baseball is already a game of failure. So if you get on yourself for the failures, it's going to make it even harder. Mm -hmm. You know, have fun, work hard, and be confident. For sure, be confident. There's a difference between cocky and confident. Yeah. Be confident, have fun, and don't, don't get too down on yourself because it'll just keep – it'll be a snowball effect if you just get down on yourself if you fail. So. Yeah, I got to – before we get to the Trent Thunder season, I got to ask you about uh, – obviously, um, I, I when I interviewed you in person and talked about the pizza, so let our fans know here – how did you get that pizza nickname? And obviously Paul's Pizza, and then you, uh, uh, your father owns a pizza place. And uh, yes, yesterday McCarthy has his McCarthy's Kitchen poster. So uh, uh, how did yeah. you how did you get your pizza thing? <clears throat> so yeah, my uh, basically my whole life, my dad's owned uh, a pizza place here in Florida. There's one in Clearwater. There's one in St. Pete. It's called Paul Chicago Pizza. His name's Paul as well. Uh, so, yeah, and growing up, all my baseball teams would always go in there. My dad would feed the team. So that's just how I got the nickname. Everyone would call me Polly Pizza, Polly Pizza everywhere. So I even have it. I have it on my gloves. If I get custom gloves, I, I write Polly Pizza on the thumb. I've, I've, I've embraced the name pretty well. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I love it, too. And uh, I mean, yesterday I asked Ryan, uh, do you guys do some like are you thinking of plan planning on doing like food competitions between you two? No, I mean, I guess when we were there, because we I, I roomed with Ryan yeah. at Ryder University and Ryan became a really good friend of mine. We still talk every day. But I mean, I guess when we eat, we would talk about which one of us could eat like 
more buffalo wings in one sitting. But no, we probably should do that. Next time I get him, get him over here, I go see him in Jacksonville. Uh, I'll make sure we have a food competition and we'll record it for you. Yes. Or, I'll beat him though. Or, I'll beat him. Or, or you know what we can do? If you guys come back to Trend Thunder next year, we can do it there. Uh oh, froze. Hmm? No, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you now. Sorry, you froze. Yeah, sorry. All right. Yeah, I was going to say, or, or if you guys come back to Trent Thunder next season, you guys can do it there too. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that'd be a good idea too. Yeah, so speaking of this team, obviously you guys had a, a, spe a special team this year. Obviously, the struggling up and down season, but I, I still consider it a special season because, because you guys came together as a team in first half. Um, uh, with all with the draft coming up and all these players moving, moving, you guys kept your heads up and kept playing playing great baseball. So, what was it? What was it like being part of this Trent Thunder team and being with the draft league and experiencing with uh, your uh, your teammates and uh, and the other teams you played against? What was that like for you? It was a great, great special experience. I mean, the first half I was there on a ten day contract. I didn't stay, but I was told. I got the offer to come back for the second half. But even that, I wasn't there for more than two weeks that first half, but I still talked to a lot of those guys like Nate Ochoa, yeah. Gus at, my, at the time, Gus Sosa was my roommate. So I got to play with really great players. I mean, those guys got drafted. EJ Exposito, I played with him a couple summers ago <clears throat> in the Futures League in Worcester, Massachusetts. So I knew him already. It was it was really cool to play with those guys and pick their brain. I went home for three weeks because, I, I mean, I struggled the first half a little bit, but I worked on what I needed to work on. I worked on all my weaknesses. I came back and, you know, I think I wanted to prove a statement that second half. And to do that with Ryan still there and the new guys, all all the new guys were we, – we got to be really close there. And I wish, I wish we would add more games because I think – we were we were starting to turn it around there at the end. Yeah. Yeah. We finally all got close together. Finally, I mean, people don't realize it's hard. It's hard to play games with brand new teammates right away. We had two practices and go right into games. It's not like we had a spring training or anything. So once we finally all got comfortable together, you saw us playing better. But sadly, we ran out of games. But it was still great to meet everybody, and play with yeah. everybody. Well, you proved everybody wrong. You had a great second half, <clears throat> excuse me, second half and uh, put up big numbers. And uh, speaking of chip on shoulder, the interesting question that came just came in from our fan. Uh, one of our fans want to know what's it like to have the chip on your shoulder, proving people wrong and working hard and 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 uh, proving the team wrong. And, and also um, and then tr and getting another offer like they want to know what's it like to have the chip on the shoulder. <clears throat> Well, I wish I could say it was the first time I played with a chip on my shoulder. Uh, I mean, my experience has been a little bit of a roller coaster from the draft to not playing in high or college to doing what I did, draft league, up and down. Uh, for me, it was just extra motivation to – I don't know. I never – growing up, I never was playing with a chip on my shoulder, but – Came come college, I did, and I realized that when I had that chip on my shoulder, and when I used that as extra fuel to take the extra swings, the extra fly balls, the extra ten minutes in the gym, I think it helped me out a lot. I mean, I don't know. Everyone, everyone's different with how they how they use that chip on their shoulder, but I never really got down on myself for it. I just, I'm a realist, so yeah. if I had that chip on my shoulder, I had a bad year. I'm, I'm honest. I had a bad year. This is what I need to work on. Mm -hmm. So that I go work on that and make sure that when I do prove people wrong that, you know, I'm, I try to be humble about it for sure. Yeah. So but, speaking of, speaking of uh, have and also it's really important to have uh, the support system around you and speaking of support system, your fa obviously family comes first and your coach is next, but what, what's it like to have your uh, parents behind your back from day one, supporting you going through the, your, your career and your um, from a younger age uh, starting baseball and then now you're here and 
obviously and, and having your girlfriend by your side. So what's that been like for you, the support system? Oh yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here without all of them, that's for sure. Uh growing up, my parents would take me to every practice, every hitting lesson, no matter how far it was. And they they gave me that opportunity to become the best I could. They put that in my hands. They gave me that opportunity. And I think I've done pretty good with it. And I appreciate everything they've done because without them, I would not, I would not be sitting here right now in this interview with you. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of, all right, so take us, I mean, tell our fans about, obviously you play with great players at Trent Thunder and um, you guys had a record of eight players getting drafted, which is amazing. And uh, yeah. I got to interview some of them too, uh, before they got drafted, like Andrew Cassetti, Cole Patton, uh, Gus Sosa, you just mentioned who went to the Phillies, Nate Ochoa went to the Nationals. Um, so what was that like seeing your team, eight, eight of your teammates getting drafted? Really cool. I know we had a group chat and every time it showed up, we would text and be like, out of boy, Gus, proud of you, whoever, Cassetti. Um, even when JoJo got signed that oh, second yeah, half, that was – I know Ryan told you the story yesterday I was listening, and I was sitting right next to JoJo when it happened. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was – I was happy for him. He deserved it. I know he was a little upset that he didn't get drafted, and, you know, I think all, obviously all of us think he should have been, mm -hmm. and he kind of – he went to the Mets and proved why he should have been. So it's really cool to see those guys get picked up and live out their dream and succeed. You want them to just keep succeeding and go as far as they can. Yeah. Um, we have another fan question. We'll take one more fan question. They want to know, uh, do you like to eat before the game or after the game? I, I really don't eat before the game. Uh, I don't like to feel full. Mm. But it actually became um, – I know Greg talked about it on the on the radio during the games that I would eat a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch before every game at home at least. That became like my superstition. Every time I ate a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch, I was guaranteed at least one hit. Wow. So that that was that's true. You you eat cinnamon cinnamon toast crunch before the game. Yep. Oh wow. That's our club our, our uh, clubby Casey. He was awesome. He was really cool in Trenton for mm -hmm. sure. But he would make sure he went out every every time we were away, he'd go out and buy like eight boxes of cinnamon toast crunch because all of us were just munching on it. <laughs> would kill the whole box before a game. Yeah. So speaking of uh, Greg Crisurda and all the staff people around, and what's what was it like be, uh, working with them this season, and obviously Jeff Hurley, the GM, and uh, Greg Crisurda. I, that's the guy who set up the interviews for us, for you guys to uh, in, to talk to us. But what's that been like working with him that, and the other people and Matt? And uh, I can go on and on and on with the staff. Oh, it was really good. They showed us a lot of professionalism and they, they treated us very good. They took care of us. If we needed anything, they were always there. Um, I got to build really, I thought, I think I built good relationships with Greg, Matt, Casey, the training staff, the coaches, everyone there. And I appreciate everything that they did for us because realistically, if they weren't there, we wouldn't be able to play at, at uh, Arm and Hammer Park. That's for sure. And they did a lot. I think their work sometimes went underappreciated, but I appreciated everything that they did. They were all really, really, really good to us. Actually, we'll take uh, another fan question here. They want to know, what do you say Arm and Hammer, speaking of the park, what do you say that's one of the best parks? Yes, for sure. The atmosphere there, I mean, I know the first half we got like over 8,000 fans. And then the second half we were averaging like four to six, somewhere in there. But when that place has a lot of fans, it's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I love playing in front of them every night. It made it good. Even even when we were bad, they let us know. But yeah. <laughs> it's fine. We We deserved it at times. That's for sure. No, but you, you feed off – I mean, players do better uh, feeding off the fans, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I – from my own experience, I agree. Yeah. Because I know we would go to some other places. I'm not going to drop any names, but <laughs> they, would, they wouldn't have more than a couple hundred fans. And yeah. the whole game just felt dead. Everyone just felt out of energy. So I think it helps a lot to have a good support system and fan base in your stadium yeah so speaking of uh 
what have you been working on this off season? Uh, tell our fans what you've been working on, and uh, have you gotten gotten any offers yet? So I have. I've been work. I've been training um, over here at a facility called Five Star Baseball. I'm also giving hitting lessons, and I'm coaching the 13 U team there. So it's pretty cool. I get to go there, coach, do the lessons, and do my training and hit and everything. So I've been doing that, hoping for some offers. I have, I've gotten a call for the Pioneer League for a team in Montana. Um, nothing official with that yet, though. Uh, and I, there's talks of some workouts coming up with some actual pro teams, but once again, none of that is official yet. So hmm. just hoping and praying, going to work as hard as I can. So when that opportunity does come, it doesn't su surprise me and I make the most of it for sure. But um, but you're plan planning to be back with Trent next year, right? If 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 if, they, if there's no offer, uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, because I know they they only have the second half. No one's no one's reached out to me. Oh, okay. Um, I know I know the draft league is talking about doing different restrictions for that second half based on age and who they let in. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going on really there. But I, I, I'd be open minded to it for sure. Hmm. Yeah. So before we get to the last two things, um, have you been watching the playoffs, uh, the, the postseason? I have. I have been. Yeah. Well, what are your thoughts on them quickly? And then uh, give us a World Series prediction. <clears throat> I think it's been really good. I, I like the underdog. So I was happy to see the Braves and the Dodgers eliminated. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't like to see Houston in the World Series. I'm not. I'm not a Yankee fan either. I'm. A, I'm a Rays fan. Oh wow! So when they got eliminated really quickly by the Guardians, that it, it wasn't fun for me. But I mean, it's been what what the Phillies are doing, what the Padres are doing is really awesome. I'm not the biggest Astros fan at all, but I think they're proving people wrong this year. So it's really exciting and. Uh, my prediction would be Astros and Phillies. Wow. And I say the Philly, I I want the Phillies to to pull the upset and win. Hmm. Your boy Bryce Harper. <laughs> Bryce and Schwarber. They deserve it. And Gus Sosa coming up soon, hopefully. Yep. <clears throat> and the last two things here. Um, our team is part of this foundation. It's called the Hugh Jackson Foundation. Um, he's a former NFL coach. Now he's coaching at Grand Lake State University. We're trying to help him prevent uh, human trafficking. Make sure the community stays safe. So we'll send you <clears throat> the foundation so you can check it out. Oh, yeah, for sure. Thank mm -hmm. you. And the last thing here, uh, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and all the essential workers right now? Thank you for everything you do. My my sister actually is an occupational therapist in St. Oh, wow. Pete. So hmm. she was working during COVID. So I know how hard they work. And just thank you. Appreciate everything you guys do because without you, we don't know what would happen, obviously. Well, well, yeah. shout out to your sister. Uh, tell her said, tell her we said thank you for her service. I will. And um, now, uh, so I'm gonna let you close it out. Tell, let our fans know where they can follow you on follow you on social media, uh, Paul. So on Instagram, it's Polly Pizza, Polly dot Pizza Eleven. Twitter, it's just P Kumalos. and then TikTok, I think it's Polly Pizza as well, Eleven. Mm. So, yeah, give me a follow. I would really appreciate it. Let's go. Go check out his father's pizza. Place. Check it out. If you're there, go, if you are located near the area, go check out their pizza. Um, but I got to I got to come up there, too. I got to check out that place, too. I'll definitely go when I come next time there. But there you have it. Our <clears throat> good friend, Paul Kulomos, Kulomos, uh Trent Thunder, first baseman, outfielder. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Paul. I mean, it's just, truly an honor. Fantastic episode. And the fans got to learn a little bit more about you uh, here, but uh, keep up the great work. Hopefully you get an offer soon uh, and uh, and a safe flight, safe journeys too, wherever you're going. But uh, thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a blast. Yeah.